The next morning, Kate and Veronica went to the place in the Alabama hills where her father had recorded his last video. Kate traveled along Whitney Portal Road, past lines of cottonwoods. She drove by the rock face where she and Veronica had discovered the coyote carcasses. Soon, she turned onto a dirt road and headed toward a string of granite formations. Before her, strata of rock stacked atop one another like layers of multi-hued dish, soft-served ice cream. Several RVs clustered at the base of these magnificent rocks. Campers enjoyed the natural beauty, oblivious to the hidden danger lurking in the desert wilderness. Kate followed Google Maps until she reached the Mobius Arch Loop Trailhead. She and Veronica grabbed some water bottles, left the car, and got on the trail. The trail wound through a gully and then around a series of rock formations. Kate followed both the trail and her GPS to ensure she wouldn't get lost. It took less than 20 minutes to reach the arch. This early, Kate and Veronica had the area all to themselves. The sun had been up for no more than an hour its rays reflecting off the rust-colored rocks ahead. To the west, Mount Whitney's snow-capped gray granite peak towered over the valley. Kate circled the arch to get a feel for the area. Because of the darkness, it was difficult to tell exactly where her father had recorded his video. She found no signs of struggle, no blood, no torn clothing. The incident may as well have happened a million years ago. Curious, Kate climbed up to the arch. It was literally shaped like a Mobius strip, a form rendered by taking a single strip of material, half twisting one end, then joining it to the other end to form a loop. Wind swirled through the rock piles of the tranquil valley. Kate stood on the arch's eastern face. Through the arch, she faced west, where she could see Mount Whitney in all its splendor. It was like peering through a looking glass and seeing a new world on the other side. She then took Veronica to the opposite side of the arch and looked east through the stone portal, where she could see the Auburn Inyo Mountains. Mommy, I want to see the big gray mountains through the arch again, Veronica said. Kate smiled. I suppose it wouldn't do any harm. Be very careful when you go over to the other side. I will, Mommy. Veronica carefully climbed around to the arch's eastern face. Kate continued to stare out toward the Inyo Mountains, waiting to see her daughter. After about a minute, Kate started getting nervous. You okay over there, honey bun? Yeah, mommy, I'm fine. Kate breathed a sigh of relief, yet she still couldn't see Veronica's face through the arch. I thought you were going to look through the arch, honey. I am, mommy. I don't see you. You need to look through the arch too. Kate climbed closer to the arch. She stuck her head through it, scanning left, right, and down. Her gut roiled. Honey, can you hear me? Yeah, mommy, I still can't see you. This is impossible, Kate thought. She should have been able to see her daughter. Trying a different approach, Kate asked, what do you see right now? Not much, Mommy, just lots of trees. It's hard to see because it's nighttime in there. Kate hesitated, unable to fully process or make sense of the implications of Veronica's words. Trees? Impossible. They were in a damn desert. There was a long, uncomfortable pause. Veronica screamed, Mommy, Mommy, I see eyes, they're coming for me. 
Kate's pulse quickened. She bit her tongue. The salty taste of blood saturated her senses. Kate whipped around the arch. There, she found her daughter staring into the portal. She whisked Veronica away from it, wrapping her daughter in her motherly embrace. Kate hugged Veronica with all her might, relieved her daughter was still with her. Veronica sobbed. It's okay, honey. You're safe now, Kate said in an effort to reassure her child. Once Veronica had calmed down and caught her breath, Kate said, now tell me what you really saw. I saw eyes, mommy. Big, bright, glowing, yellow eyes. They watched me from the dark, from the other side. Kate turned toward the arch and peered through it. She saw what she had expected to see, a beautiful view of Mount Whitney's chiseled gray rock faces. Crouching to be eye level with Veronica, Kate grabbed her by the shoulders and bored into her daughter's tearing eyes. There's nothing there. There are no eyes, no darkness. It's all okay. Tentatively, Veronica crept up the rock for a better vantage point. She peeked through the arch as if expecting something to reach out and grab her. I, I don't understand, mommy. Now all I see is the gray mountain. Where did the nighttime place go? Hugging Veronica again, Kate said, I don't know, honey, I don't know. But whatever you saw, it has something to do with why your pop-pop is missing. Gazing through the portal, Kate could think of many possibilities, but not a single one of them made any sense.